Carrot soup doesn't have to be boring. This is quickly roasted carrots with wonderful spices, and I want you to feel confident to make a delicious soup just like this, so let's make it together. Quick roasted carrot soup. It doesn't have to be in the middle of winter. It's a great transitional soup. There are transitional soups if you didn't know that. And carrot soup is one of those because it has that sweetness of the carrots and you can really up it with some delicious spices. We're gonna use coriander and cumin and wonderful thyme and smoked paprika and it's all gonna come together in a really delicious soup. To start, we want to get our carrots ready. Now I'm using plain carrots. Guess what though? You can use any carrot you have. If you happen to grow carrots, use those. And guess the ones I grow? I have all types of colors in the garden. I have bright yellow, dark yellow, I have orange, I have muted orange, and I keep them usually throughout the winter in the fridge because they can keep for a long time, and I use those. It will change the color of the soup, but in a video like this, I'm gonna use the ones we usually find in just a grocery store, which is orange carrots. So we have our carrots on here, I'm roughly chopping them. The whole point of this soup is to drive home flavor, and to do that, we're gonna start by roasting a lot of the items because that is going to just amplify that flavor, and that's what we want. So then we're gonna take a sweet potato, so just like a white potato would, I should say, you're gonna notice something here. And this is a true thing about me. I didn't peel the carrots, I didn't peel the potato. I scrubbed the carrots, I scrubbed the potato, but I'm not peeling it. And do you know why? I don't like to. We're gonna blend the soup in the end. And to me, why get rid of all that nutrition in that peel? Also, the time it takes to peel, I just don't like. And I, I really see no reason, once it's, all put together, you don't know it. And you know, you can kind of gauge. If you have blemishes on your carrots and feel like you need to peel them, go ahead. But I see no reason. So what the sweet potato is gonna do is, obviously it adds a little bit more of a starch to it. It just kind of ups the consistency of the soup when it's finished to just a better texture. And that's really the main reason for it. So over all of this, we're gonna just douse it in some olive oil. So the olive oil during roasting is actually really important. High heat with olive oil, that's gonna create that Maillard reaction, that's gonna create some caramelization in all of this, which is super important. So I wanna get in there and make sure everything is well coated. That is, to me, first and foremost, roasting 101. Coat the items well in whatever oil you're gonna use, because that is what's gonna contact with the pan and actually create that flavor. So now I'm gonna wash my hands, but then we're gonna just sprinkle on the salt, the pepper, everything we need. So next when we're roasting, you need salt. So I'm always gonna sprinkle salt over everything. This is what's gonna help to have layers of flavor. Now I know some of us wanna watch salt, but the thing is when you're cooking at home, making homemade food in your house, not eating out, not buying it prepackaged, you're gonna be using less salt than you would if you were doing all those other things. So salting the food is important because guess what? Salt brings out flavor and that's really important. We're gonna put on some fresh black pepper. That's gonna again add that flavor to it. We wanna put that all around and then the only fresh herb I'm gonna use is thyme. Thyme works well with really anything, and I think it's one of those delicious things where those fresh leaves just kind of work into the carrots, and they really bring out such, they work well with the sweetness of the carrots and add just kind of that herbal note. Now, you could use a lot of herbs here if you want to. You could use more of a sage if you wanted to. Rosemary could actually work at different times. I just like thyme, and I think it works really well in this. So we have that all spread out. Now let's talk about the garlic. So I have garlic here. A whole head. What I'm gonna do is just lob off the top and we're gonna just actually roast this whole head of garlic in a little foil, piece of foil. Now, all those little green stems coming up, for years you he have heard probably that the sprouts on garlic, you don't want them, remove them, they're bitter. They're not, they taste like garlic. Don't feel bad if you see those. This is my homegrown garlic and we're now sitting you know what, eight months after I harvested it, so it starts to sprout sometimes, and that's okay. I'm gonna put just a little bit of olive oil on it just to keep it soft. And then we're gonna just take this, par this I keep wanting to call it parchment, but it's foil, bring it up, and just make a little sling out of it. It's nothing important, bring up the sides, just trapping in all that moisture. And this is gonna roast on the pan, but steaming in there so it gets soft. And it's going to soften the flavor of the garlic gonna temper it out, not be strong and forward, but be almost like a sweet garlic flavor at the end. So we're gonna put this all right in the oven, high heat, that's gonna really roast it, create caramelization until it's done. Then we'll put a quick soup together. 
I just took these out of the oven and you can see they start caramelizing. You get the brown bits on them. You get the, see how they start like shriveling up and getting the beautiful crust on them? That's flavor. And that's the whole point of roasting at first. One, you don't have to do as much work. You just put it in the oven. Two, it adds a ton of flavor. Now, if we look inside this foil packet, which from the oven, you can usually touch the edges of the foil. It's not as hot as you think. But if we look in here, do you notice how that garlic is darkened? on top and if we squeeze it look how they just start popping out that's what we're going to put into our soup because it adds a whole nother depth and sweetness of flavor without that strong garlic flavor so what i'm doing now is just taking an onion i'm going to finish chopping it up so instead of roasting the onion i want to get the onion into the butter and really get kind of a mellow flavor on it so we're going to do that with some butter that's melting on the stove in a small stock pot here and that's the whole point is that i want instead of the roasted onion flavor, because sometimes you want kind of a forward flavor. And with this onion, I want it to be one that is just sitting and gonna saute in that butter that's just melting. And the reason we're using butter is we used oil to roast the vegetables, but butter adds a richness and kind of a rounded flavor that you can't get from oil. And it works really well with the carrots. It really lends well with the sweetness of the carrots. So I'm gonna put it right into the butter. I'm gonna just let this saute a little bit with some salt, and then we'll kind of add a little bit more flavor. So the onion's been sautéing and getting soft and just beginning to want to pick up a little bit of color. And I don't want to get it too brown, but this is where I want to start really adding some flavor. So we're going to use some whole seeds, whole spices, and you can use the dried ones too. I like to toast actually the whole ones if I can. So I have some whole coriander seeds. We're going to put those right in there into that hot butter. And then some whole cumin seeds. Again, this is just a way to toast up the seeds. And we're going to blend this all. So we're going to blend it so they get nice and fine and ground up in there. A little bit of black pepper. And then of course, my one of my favorites, some smoked paprika. The smoked paprika just adds this underlying smokiness that really lends well with the sweetness of carrots. So what I wanna do is just work these around in that hot butter. So anytime you're working these and sauteing them and toasting kind of those whole spices, it just adds another dimension of flavor. So while those are just toasting in there, I'm gonna take that garlic that we softened in the oven. And remember I said it just squeezes out. So it's easy enough to touch now that look at this. We're just squeezing out all that garlic right into here. So that adds this beautiful roasted sweet garlic flavor. And that is gonna work down into here and look how it already, it just smashes in. So those seeds have now sauteed for a little bit so we can add in all the vegetables we roasted. Already the smell is just amazing. So I'm gonna add in all these carrots and the potatoes which are already soft. So the cooking time is really cut down now that we roasted them. We don't have to let them go for near as long. So we can just put them right into here and all the work is done. And what's gonna be awesome is that we not only flavor these in the oven while roasting, we're now gonna flavor them again with that spice mixture we have in the butter, with those onions, with that sweetened almost garlic. It's all gonna work in there. So what I wanna do is with those add in some vegetable stock. So I'm keeping this pretty much vegetarian, obviously. It's not vegan with the butter, but you could change all of that. So I'm gonna put in some stock, and we're just gonna let this come to a boil, and then just turn it down to a simmer and let it simmer for a few minutes until everything really comes together. So it's been simmering for a bit, and you can see it's just slowly simmering away, heating everything through, and kind of just melting all those flavors. So now we can just bring it over, and this is a blended soup, obviously. This isn't the prettiest thing to eat at this point, but also a blended soup isn't just for looks. The consistency works better with what it's being prepared for. So I'm just gonna use an immersion blender. You can use your just stand blender if you want to. Anything that just be able to puree the soup. And we're gonna start kind of slow and then get it all worked up to smooth. So after a couple minutes, and again, if you do it with a blender, it does. you might have to do it in batches, but you can just add it then back to the pan. But you can see how beautiful and simple that really is to just come together as a soup. That's what I love about a blended soup. I think they're super simple and they're forgiving. So what we have there is the soup. It's all finished. And then you can just serve it up. And this is a soup that has a beautiful, I think, viscosity to it. You're going to think a blended soup is going to be boring and watery. It isn't. Look how much richness that has. And a lot of that is just because of that sweet potato that we put in there. And the carrots too, you know, carrots have a little bit of starch to them, so they actually do firm up. Now, personally, I like it with a little hit of maybe some Greek yogurt, but you can also do some heavy cream, which kind of just finishes it off, I think, really nicely to have just a little 
dollop on there. It has a little bit of richness there at the end that kind of finishes it off. And then a little bit of cilantro. If you don't like cilantro, do some parsley, either one of those, but I like the fresh kick of green at the end. And that's the soup. That's how simple this is for a gorgeous soup. Now, you might be thinking, I don't know if I'm in the mood for soup. Try it cold. This would be a great chilled soup too. You just wanna thin it down a little bit more because as it cools, it gets thicker. Mm. That's delicious. What I think is surprising is that little hit of cream on top or yogurt, whatever you want, really rounds out the flavor and the richness of it. Even a little bit of olive oil will bring that all together. But what I get is a sweet hint of spice from all the spices we put in, the sweet from the sweet potato and the carrots, that cumin comes through with the coriander and then that beautiful low smokiness from the smoked paprika. It's a beautiful soup. It's really simple. It comes together really quick and easily. And it's a great hearty meal. If you're still wanting some cozy type foods, this is it. Or if you're wanting something a little bit lighter, this is a great one too. So what do I hope you do with this? I hope you make something delicious and homemade because that's the point of these recipes is for you to feel confident to make the food. It, you know what? It doesn't take much. If I can do it, anybody can do this because it's super easy. Check my website, wiseguy.com for this recipe and all my others. Until next time, enjoy something delicious. That's the point. <laughs>